Hello, everybody. Today I'm talking about sharing and why it may not be maximal for development to force kids to share and what to do instead. So earlier this week on Instagram stories, I talked a little bit about this because I posted about the book, It's Okay Not to Share by Heather Schumacher, which I'll share down in the comments below. It's a wonderful book. If you want a quick read, you can kind of bounce around for different topics and see what makes sense to you at the time. You don't necessarily need to read the whole thing, which are my favorite types of books to recommend to busy parents. So today I'll talk about a few reasons why uh, forcing to share or forcing really to do anything, forcing to say sorry, forcing to say please may not be the best for development at the time. So number one, uh, kids are not often developmentally ready to understand what sharing entails or what sorry or please or thank you entails, meaning they can't embody the perspective taking that is essential for a sorry really to be authentic or for a kid really to want to share what they are using. However, they are beginning to develop this, and one way that we can help them do this instead of forcing to share is by really trusting them. So number one, I would say really trust them to work through this without bits of our support and guidance along the way. So if a child is really enjoying something, so at the clinic this happens a lot, where a child will be really enjoying a swing and just living their best life on the swing, and then another kid wants to use it in our diet or a group, and it isn't, uh, the child on the swing isn't ready to give it up. So one thing I would say is um, by uh, just asserting trust in the child on the swing, like, I bet you'll let Johnny know when you're done. I bet you'll let Johnny know when, when you're done and he can have a turn. You really like that. It's so fun to be on the swing. It makes sense that you wouldn't want to give it up. So I'd probably limit language depending on the child's age or, or um, readiness at the time to hear and process verbal language. But overall, the idea is that kids really do. It's, it's, it's surprising, I think, how often kids will just be like, okay, I'm done. You enjoy this now. Um, or they will just be done and naturally give it up. So um, that's the first step is really trusting that they can do it and enabling that uh, competency within them to work through it. Number two, if... It is more challenging. Um, I would point out what each child wants in the moment. And I might even do this anyway to help with perspective taking and reading situations and all that good stuff that encompasses social intelligence. So for example, I might say, oh, Johnny really wants to do the swing. You are making the swing look so fun. You're loving it. You're spinning around. You're laughing. You really like that swing. And Johnny wants a turn too. Hmm. But it seems like you're not ready to give it up. No, you're not ready right now. So I wonder when you'll be ready. Hmm. Just kind of pointing out without problem solving, without uh, saying either child needs to do something, just pointing out different aspects of the situation and helping them to read each other's cues and read the signals of the environment and the situation at the time. And it's also really validating to each child in the moment, which is really supportive to regulation. So number three is that this is a really nice time to practice regulating through totally natural social situations that they will be dealing with for the rest of their lives. So it's awkward if an adult jumps in and says, no, stop, do this, because that isn't what happens later down the road hardly ever. So rarely do we have a third party that comes in to help solve our conflicts for us. We work through it on our own, or we go to many more maladaptive strategies like avoiding or numbing or resisting or attacking. So I think as adults, we're still trying to figure out all of this stuff. And it's an ideal time to learn it in early childhood. So if uh, a child has the opportunity to regulate through these difficulties and these challenges right now with a little bit of our guidance, they'll ultimately learn to do that on their own and to self-regulate. So one thing that pointing out each child's perspective does is it helps the child feel validated, which again is helpful for regulation. So if, the, if Johnny, who's waiting for the swing, is so, so excited and he's starting to get a little bit frustrated about the wait time, an adult there to share that with him and just recognize that he's really frustrated and he's really excited to go on the swing helps him to access what we call the interbrain, which is the adult's level of calm and competency 
and the neurons in our brain are helping to connect with his in some way that is helpful for his regulation. So I won't go deeply into the science behind that. Maybe another video will be helpful for that. But for now, the goal of all of this is that we help kids to read situations and read others and adapt to different environments and different people because that's a very human way of going through life. They'll constantly be required to adapt. So there's no black and white and there's no fixed rule about how to do this and it's, it's really trial and error for each child in each situation. But hope this is helpful and uh, there's a lot of information. Janet Lansbury has a lot of good articles on how to navigate play dates or navigate times at the park and situations where there's other parents and other people involved and how we can help kids not be bullies or not be um, kind of taking situations a little bit more out of hand is a judgment, but um, we want kids to be able to be successful and feel good. And of course that will not be the case all the time, but there's a lot of competency building ideas in her articles. So check that out if you want more and reach out with any questions.